My job is to thank Rajo. Rajo, <laughs> give, give a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> now, well, obviously, after three days, I also can declare that you are very resilient. You know, you started early in the morning, 8.30, or some, well, some people actually started at 6.30, right, to take the bus from here. You stay down till 8.30. Well, right now it's uh, six thirty, so you are very resilient. So thank you very much. So now I'm not going to summarize all the conference findings. We will do that. Uh, we will distribute the synopsis and a summary to you, probably in a month or two, and we can use that um, findings to communicate to some of the global agenda setting, like a post 2015 agenda debate, and your inputs will be very important to help to revise the document. I think you will have a chance to provide inputs into that. So for the last two or three days, I went to different events, side events, well, panel sessions, obviously plenary sessions. So I also talked to many of you, what have you learned? Is anything new? I can categorize your responses to several, to several. One is, yeah, business as usual, nothing new. Some are more modest, yeah, I have learned something. Others said, wow, it's really exciting events. It's a good place for networking, but you don't need to come to Alice to do networking. You know, you could be in Brussels, in Washington to do networking. Others said, wow, this is really eye-opening. It's a new concept, new idea, new way of doing business. So you can see such a dy dynamic, mixed responses. So what I will do in the next few minutes is to, just to give you my perspectives, probably very biased, with a research angle or research lens. My number one point is, resilience is not just a buzzword. It has new meaning. It is about ability, capacity, capability. The global level, national level, community level, probably more importantly, people, individual people, their ability to predict, prevent, cope with, recover, and even prosper after crisis, after shocks. So it has real meanings. And in terms of development, obviously, how can we really link short-term relief to, to long-term development? Or when we develop long-term growth strategy. How can we make sure that the people have resilience against shocks? So it's not just a buzzword. Second, measurement. This is probably the most controversial topic. We heard that we need more frequent data. We heard that we need to disaggregate data by gender, by different social groups. We heard about that, you know, particularly dis discrimination. We also needed to use new technology to connect some of the data that are related to resilience. This sort of exposed how the survey data is good, but not sufficient. We needed to use ICT, certain modern medical devices. Have you heard about Apple is going to introduce a so-called health watch? It can tell you when you wear that watch, you will know your blood sugar level, whether you have heart disease, diseases, whether you're anemia. So Apple is, is investing billions and billions of dollars on that. So how can we use these modern technologies, electric, uh, electronic sensors, to really look at the, some, of the, some of the signs that some crisis will come? And the household survey will tell you where the crisis has come, the impact uh, on, on the people. So that's uh, um, the, uh, the measurement issues, data issues. We need to do more work. The number three is system. Resilience is about a system. Sustainable global food system that can feed everybody nutritiously, healthily. If you talk about a system, then every note, every note, every link in that system is so critical. The whole system, every node is strong, but if one node is very, very weak, 
if that node fails, the whole system will fail. So that's why we needed to look at the system approach, global food system, trade, market, you know, animal related diseases, food safety issues. So system approach. Then I also heard that we don't overinvest in resilience. Part of the reason is our resources are very limited. If you have a system, so where can you target your limited resources to fix the weakest, weakest, weakest nodes there? So not just maximization, I think that's Joachim Warmer, it's optimization. And that lots of work um, need to be done to make sure that we optimize our resources, our effort, to make sure that system is resilient. Well, I'm a, my number four point is about scaling up. We know that certain countries, certain communities have built a resilience against various shocks, whether it's big, big like a um, tsunami, earthquake, whether it's a small at a house level, health shocks or accidents. Here I wanted to emphasize the role of social capital, the role of community, the role of family network. I have to say as a researcher, we are behind certain NGOs to look at the community's experience, NGOs experience. They have done tremendous amount of work. For example, the concern worldwide, Helen Keller International have been working on this issue for a long time. Researchers just to try to look at that issue in the last four or five years, particularly after the 2007, 2008 food crisis. My last point, point probably it's not new, is multidisciplinary, multi-sectors approach. We need sociology, sociologists, anthropologists, who can really understand the social, uh, community, collective action issues, political science, yeah, political economy issues, and obviously not NIST economists. So, and a multi-actor we have heard about, the NGOs, research institutions, um, the community, the government. So all this will come together. Now the way forward, that you will think about what you are going to do with your, your work or your institution, from your pers perspective, just like Karen, Karen Brooks, you know, who's, who needs our large research program. IPRI new strategy identified resilience as a research theme. But we wanted to look at that issue. But more importantly, we wanted to mainstream resilience into all research areas. For example, sustainable food production, healthy food system, trade, market, transforming agriculture, particularly smallholders, how can them? And be resilient. So we, we mainstream the resilience into all these research areas. Now my last point, point is about a post-2015 agenda. We got to work hard, work together to make sure that the post-2015 agenda take the resilience issue very seriously. One is resilience, we cross all these different areas, sustainable development, job, of, of course food and nutrition security. And Without, taking, without tackling the resilience issues, we will not be able to achieve ending hunger, ending malnutrition by 2020, 2025, or 2030. So resilience is a must. Let me, let me end by quoting Gerda's um, word. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I wish you a safe journey back home. All right.